All right, I am back with another build, and today we're doing a, another build request, but this one was from a long, long time ago. And I've had it sat in my backlog for a very long time, because I was never quite sure how exactly I wanted to do it. But now I think I figured it out. Today we are building a Grenada, which the build request basically asked for was someone who is capable of using ranged weaponry, but also being able to throw grenades effectively, basically kind of being an infantry soldier. But then I took it a bit a one step further. I wanted this guy to be kind of an agile fighter capable of using a ranged heavy crossbow, because that kind of just felt right to me, as well as being able to throw grenades as well. And when I kind of realized exactly what I was creating, I realized I was making something very similar to Doom Guy from the Doom series. Uh, again, being able to maneuver around the battlefield quite quickly and obviously be very adept with firearms and throwing grenades, as we said. Uh, not so much for demonic changing weapons or or like a um, like a giant sword or something like that, but just somebody who is very, very capable at range in multiple different ways. And I think this build turned out pretty well, so let's get into it. First up, uh, you can kind of choose how you want to level this build. There's kind of two ways to do it, depending on what you want to do. I'll go into the alternate options a little bit later, but for now I'm going to be focusing on the final build I decided on. I'm going to be kicking things off with Fighter, because this is going to give us access to all the weapons and armor we could possibly want, as well as a fighting style, that being archery, to give us a plus two to our ranged weapon attacks. Makes perfect sense for us. As for the ability scores, I've gone for a bit of a weird spread here. 16 in dexterity, as heavy crossbows do actually use dexterity. I would I would have expected them to use strength, but whatever. So we want at least a decent dex score. Constitution at 16, this is going to be actually quite a tanky build at the end of the day, as we don't really need other stats too much. Strength at 14, I want to be able to jump around the map at least somewhat effectively, as well as... Um, uh, have a decent throwing distance as that is tied to strength, so I decided to leave this at a pretty middling 14. Intelligence and Wisdom I've put at 10 just for our dump stats and Charisma is at 8. If we're thinking about building this based off of Doom Guy, he doesn't exactly talk much, but he's still very intimidating, so we will be getting that. And for the record, you may be thinking, why the hell have you made this a dwarf? Because I wanted to? And surprisingly enough, the closest way to get to Doom Guy's actual face is to play a dwarf. And I just thought, you know what, dwarves and like mechanical ranged crossbows and grenades, that just kind of made sense to me. So I've gone with a gold dwarf here, which gives us a bit more HP per level, which is nice, making us even more tanky. So this is technically a ranged tanking build, which I've only ever done once before with my Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy VII builds with Barrett. So, you know, it's an interesting concept. As for our proficiencies, I've gone with the soldier background, because that just made sense, giving us athletics and intimidation. And fighter gives us insight and survival as some decent starting proficiencies, but you could also go with perception if you like. Next up at fighter level 2, we're going to be getting action surge, allowing us to take two actions, basically take an extra action once per short rest, which is really, really nice. It makes us able to just fire more bullets or throw more grenades in a single round, which is great. Next up, we have, uh, well, we're going to be multiclassing. I only want two levels of fighter. Now, here's the thing. You can kind of level up this build in any order you want. You can start with any of the classes, and it's not really going to change anything, as long as you make sure you're getting that ranged weapon proficiency. So fighter or barbarian would work. But you'll need to start up as barbarian if you want to take wizard because obviously if you are making grenades with if you're going to be using grenades with the spill then taking two levels of transmutation wizard would get you things like long strider uh enhanced leap uh beverful a bunch of other useful things shield for just as a little bit of extra defense um and obviously transmutation wizard would give you the ability to upon succeeding a medicine check uh, of six of 15 to be able to create two grenades per alchemy solution you're going to be using alchemy a lot with this build if you want to get as many grenades as possible but you will still be able to find a bunch just lying around uh, as that is kind of the main focus of this build so that's an option if you so if you want to you can replace the two levels of fighter in this build with wizard but maybe take up the barbarian level first just throwing it out there if you wanted to try it. And as such, you will also probably need the warped headband of intellect if you want to do that as well. That's kind of how you could make your own grenades a bit more effectively. But for now, 
I'm going to be sticking with the non kind of wizard variant because in reality you could just have a transmutation wizard in your party as a hireling that could do all that for you much more effectively. So I felt like that was the better way to go, but if you wanted it all in one build it is more than possible. But regardless, speaking of, we are going to be going into Barbarian. Now again, you could take these levels in any order you like as long as you start with Barbarian or Fighter first, and Barbarian is going to be our kind of main leveling for this build, giving us Rage which is going to give us a boost to throwing damage Again, yes, the grenades are going to be doing like their main damage through like their actual effects, their explosion radius, but you can still lob a grenade at someone, hitting them on the head before it explodes for that extra bit of damage, so we might as well take it, and Barbarian is going to give us a few more things that we want. Barbarian is also going to give us Reckless Attack, allowing us to gain advantage on attack rolls, so whenever we throw our grenades or fire our crossbow, we can basically give ourselves advantage. Um, next up we have the- why did I pause for a second? That was so strange. Next up we get to pick our subclass, and of course we're going with Berserker. This is a throwing build at the end of the day, but even though we're mainly only throwing grenades, not weapons or goblins, but we still are going to want that bonus action throw to give us the maximum amount of throwing per turn that we could possibly get. And being a barbarian as well, getting those resistances, making us even more tanky, and this is also going to have a- also Frenzy is going to give us that- bonus action throw like I said, which is going to give us even more damage on our throw attacks as well as being able to knock enemies prone. So we knock them prone and then they just explode. Really works well for this build. And it kind of gets that rage aspect as well that Doom Guy is kind of known for. Next up at Barbarian level 4 we do get a new feat and here, I mean, we might as well grab sharp shooter. Now our dexterity is only at 16 at this point but maybe in the early levels of the game you picked up something like the graceful cloth to give you a plus two to make it 18. I am going for armor with this build because it felt right. So you can pick up sharp shooter now or you can get an ability score improvement first. It's entirely up to you. I might go for the ability score improvement first as we're only going to be getting two with this build and as such dexterity being bumped up to 18 here would make sense but make sure you could, you could pick up sharp shooter now or later. Entirely up to you. At Barbarian level 5, we're going to be getting extra attack as well as fast movement, giving us more movement speed as long as we're not wearing heavy armor. We're not, we're wearing medium. This means that we're able to, as a ranged character, we're able to move and maneuver around the battlefield a lot more effectively. Again, I played as a dwarf here, which gives us stunted movement speed anyway, so this kind of helps make up for it. If you really wanted to optimize that, you'd play as a wood elf instead. But they looked a bit too pretty for this build. I wanted some grunge for this build. What does that even mean? I don't know. Next up at Barbarian level 6, we are going to be getting an additional Rage Charge, uh, which just means we can Rage now more times per long rest, which is nice, and kind of rounds out our HP quite nicely, giving us a solid 90 at this level. Now next up, we're going to be heading over to our final multiclass, and you probably already guessed what it is. We are going with Rogue. This is going to give a Sneak Attack, which we can use on our ranged weapons I believe which is perfect so we're going to get that extra little bit of slashing damage whenever we have advantage against an enemy which we will be able to get a lot thanks to reckless attack so you know there we go uh, we also get a couple of skill proficiencies here and I'm probably going to recommend getting uh, expertise on intimidation as well as athletics for those better throws and your proficiency can be whatever you like it really doesn't matter Next up at Rogue level 2, we're going to gain the ability to hide, disengage, and dash as a bonus action. These two are going to be super important for allowing us to maneuver around the battlefield and get out of danger so that we can continue firing shots and throwing grenades from range. Next up is the Thief. Uh, because we are taking the Thief subclass in order to gain that second bonus action. That means two bonus action throws per turn, much more uh, kind of, what you call it, uh, flexibility with our dash and disengage, much more maneuverability, more throwing, more damage overall. It just made too much sense not to grab. And finally, our final feat here at level 4, we're going to obviously be at level 12 as well. We can pick up Sharpshooter here to just give us that maximum amount of power. Yes, we're getting this quite late, but if you don't care about those fighter levels, or if you don't intend to take them at all, you want to maybe drop those for two more levels of Barbarian. But you could pick up the Rogue levels a lot earlier, get this earlier, whatever you want to do. Just play this build how you like. I just find that this final kind of level combination just 
just gives you the maximum amount of power and accuracy to be able to do what you want to do. Again, that archery fighting style is really key. And that is the build. Overall, you're going to be getting a ton out of it. I'm just going to hide that. That's video making stuff. Uh, you're going to be getting a ton out of this. You're going to get really powerful ranged weapon attacks. Uh, the ability to use a ton of grenades to the most to their most effective. Like, you, like you're just going to get effectiveness, I should say. You're just going to get a bunch of, you know, range, like throwing attacks with those. A bunch of different status effects with the grenades, which I will be going over in a minute. You just have a ton of different options. So... Let's get into the equipment. I apologize if this video is a, is a bit rushed, it seems. I'll explain why at the end. Um, so basically, the equipment for this is fairly standard. I mean, there's nothing too crazy here. It's mainly just ranged weapon buffs and stuff for throwing. And obviously, we have the grenades up here. I'm pretty sure this is actually a modded grenade. You're going to go over there for now. Don't explode. Don't explode. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, we have some regular ass grenades over here. Don't worry, I didn't use these in the combat footage. So, let's get into the equipment. First off, our main ranged weapon for this build is going to be the Hellfire Engine Crossbow. It is just the best heavy crossbow in the game, in my opinion. Uh, at least it's a, or at least maybe it's about the same as the Fabricated Arbalest, but they do different things. It's a plus two crossbow with the ability to cast Lightning Arrow once per long rest, just giving you a big charged shot when you need it, as well as a unique ability called the Reposition Malfactor, allowing you to pull creatures closer to you, doing a little bit of extra damage as well. Uh, it just allows you to basically pull out enemies from a crowd and be able to kind of isolate them so your teammates can go in. Or maybe you want to pull a teammate away because they did update this so that if you use this on a teammate, it doesn't do any damage. So you can pull your melee, your melee fighter out of the way before you throw a grenade at the crowd that they're standing in the middle of. So I felt like it just had a lot of mobility and utility that made sense for this build. So I wanted to pick it up and it kind of looks mechanically, which is what I wanted. Uh, but an early game option for this would be the Giant's Breaker, basically allowing you to inflict reeling every time you hit a target with a plus one weapon. Uh, with this plus one weapon, basically. And reeling means that they have a negative one penalty to attack rolls for every turn remaining, so it just makes you a bit harder to hit. Speaking of reeling, we have the Adamantine Shield here as our shield, because again, with a ranged weapon, you can kind of just have whatever you like in the melee slot, so you might as well just pick, get the extra arm, uh, armor class. So an Adamantine Shield is going to be great for us, it's going to give us a plus two to our armor class, attackers are sent reeling when they hit us with a melee attack, and critical hits cannot be landed against us, which makes us even more tanky. Perfect. As well as paired with the Knife of the Undermountain King, this is just here to give us that critical hit, um damage threshold reduction so we roll critical hits on a 19 or higher as well as uh we re we re-roll damage that is two or less on damage die just meaning we're going to be constantly getting those high damage numbers off especially with things like sharpshooter that's going to come in really handy um so with that we now will get into the main equipment uh, we have the Mask of Soul Perception here. This is going to give us a plus two bonus to attack rolls, initiative rolls, and perception checks. This is just going to allow us to go first in combat, getting us into position, as well as using that bonus to attack rolls to offset Sharpshooter's penalty. Uh, but in the early game, around Act 2, you can pick up the Marksmanship Hatch, which just gives you a plus one bonus to your ranged attacks and thrown attack rolls. So it will just give you a big buff overall to your uh, ranged attacks, and then you can upgrade to the uh, Mask of Soul Perception after that. Next up for our armor, I've chosen the Armor of Agility, basically just kind of the best generic medium armor, adding your full dexterity bonus to your armor class, as well as not po imposing disadvantage on self checks, as well as giving you a plus two to your saving throws, basically just giving us a buttload of AC, a plus four with a base of 17, which is really, really nice. But an early game option would be the Adamantine Scale Mail, reducing all incoming damage by one, you getting that same reeling effect when hit with a melee attack, as well as making it so critical hits can't be landed against you. Since you're gonna be this weapon out this armor out anyway that's kind of why i recommended grabbing the shield but i know you can only get two adamantine kind of things in the game so if you want to maybe use something else in place of the scale mail uh so that you can put or maybe put the scale mail on another character something like that you can kind of change it up this isn't necessary this is just a solid act one medium armor for you next up are our gloves which are the hell dust gloves this is just going to give us basically a big 
extra dollop of damage, a 1d6 of fire, to our attacks. And again, kind of going with that Doom Guy inspiration, I felt like getting some sort of Hellfire made a bit of sense, but this is just extra damage. But you can also use or use these up until you get the Helldust Gloves, and these are the Gloves of Uninhibited Kashigo, allowing you to deal an additional 1d4 damage with your throw attacks. So again, when a grenade actually hits a person, even before they explode, this will let it do a bit of extra damage. And if you find that you prefer that for a Grenada build, then you can keep this. However, I found the Helldust Gloves to be a bit more useful overall. And finally, the Boots of Persistence, giving us Freedom of Movement and Long Strider. Again, just a bit of extra movement from Long Strider, and Freedom of Movement preventing us from being uh, affected by difficult terrain or magical effects, and, can, and making it so we can't be paralyzed or restrained, just giving us all of that movement that we could possibly want. But if movement's what you're after, and you might prefer these over the Boots of Persistence, but this is still a great early game option, is the Boots of Speed, allowing you to dash as a bonus action, which we can already do as a rogue, but if you're not taking those rogue levels right away, uh, then these will be a good early game pickup, allowing you to kind of do the same thing. But Click Heals, which is the ability that we get from this, is technically superior to the, bon to the bonus action dash from the rogue, as it makes opportuni uh, uh, opportunity attacks have disadvantage against you. So you might prefer these, especially in the early game, or you might just prefer these overall if you like that uh, disadvantage, but once you pick up those rogue levels, these kind of lose a bit of value, so it's up to you what you kind of want to use there. Next up for the accessories, we have the Moon Drop Pendant. This is a really fun one. Whenever we have 50% or less hit points, we don't provoke opportunity attacks when we move. Totally forgot about this during the combat footage as I was still disengaging when I had slightly lower HP, but what are you going to do? And since we have such a high HP pool anyway, this is going to trigger way sooner than usual, so we can still kind of maneuver around the battlefield without invoking opportunity attacks without having to worry about being too low on HP, so I think this is quite nice to grab. Now, this is kind of a mistake I made, I've just realized. This is the Risky Ring, giving you advantage on attack rolls, but you receive disadvantage on saving throws. Now this is, I kind of wanted to show this off anyway, because obviously this is slightly less useful than on most builds that we use things like Great Weapon Master or Sharpshooter, because we have Reckless Attack. However, I wanted to point it out as this is kind of a side grade. It's kind of like, depend. it kind of just shows off what would you rather trade off? So the Risky Ring makes it gives you disadvantage on saving throws in exchange for advantage on attack rolls, uh, whereas Reckless Attack uh, makes all enemies have advantage to hit you with their attack rolls. So you, you can kind of pick and choose if you'd rather take the penalty from Reckless Attack or the penalty from Risky Ring. I would say the penalty from Risky Attack uh, is Reckless Attack is better overall, because Reckless Attack is only will impose that disadvantage when you need the bonus that it gives, whereas the Risky Ring always has that disadvantage. So I'd probably go with Reckless Attack, but I figured I'd show the Risky Ring off in case you wanted a side grade, or in case you want to kind of build this concept, but maybe you don't want the Barbarian levels. Uh, instead, maybe you opt for Fighter, or maybe a bit of that Wizard, like I said. So I thought I'd show this off, but really anything can go in this ring slot. It's not really going to affect what you do. Uh, hell, even something like Crusher's Ring to give you a little bit more movement speed could be nice. Throw anything you want in this ring slot. I just kind of wanted to discuss both your options for gaining advantage to offset that Sharpshooter, which is important. Basically, if you have a great Weapon Master or Sharpshooter on a build, you want advantage on your attacks in some way, so I figured I'd show both off here. Totally didn't make a mistake, and forgot the Reckless Attack existed when I made this build. Totally, totally not a thing, 100%. And finally, we have the Ring of... can I? Oh yeah, there you go, the Ring of Free Action would be a good option, yeah. That's a good option. If you don't want to use the Boots of Persistence, it kind of gives you a little bit of that effect. Or maybe even something like... What else is here? The Strange Conduit Ring, if you concentrate on the spell which you can't be bar the Barbarian. I don't know what I'm saying at this point anymore. You get the gist. And finally, the Ring of Flinging, basically just doing the same things as the Gloves of gloves of Uninhibited Kashiko, giving you that little bit of extra throw damage, uh, that 1d4, making it a 2d4 stacked with the gloves. Again, just when that grenade bonks them on the head before it explodes, it just does that little bit of extra damage. Thought I would include it on the build. Uh, oh, and by the way, this armor is all vanilla. The looks of the character are all vanilla, and I have dyed this armor in sage green because I thought it looked nice. Uh, so yeah, that is the build. Overall, what you're going to be getting out of this is um, a lot of maneuverability, a lot of damage, and a lot of different variants. 
let, and in fact, I just realized I forgot to go over the grenades, so let's do that quickly. This is just some examples of things you can use. Smoke powder bombs, I would say, are probably going to be your bread and butter, dealing 3d4 plus 9 force damage on in a kind of radius around the impact. Definitely probably the strongest option you're going to be able to go with, and it's going to be really great for dealing with groups of enemies. Holy Water will deal radiant damage to... Can my mouse not move? There we go. Will deal radiant damage to fiends and undead when it hits the ground. Quite nice. Oil flasks will create oil surfaces, which then you can light on fire with Alchemist's Fire, causing a fire damage and an explosion on impact and burning enemies. And the Grease Bottle can make enemies fall prone and half their movement speed. So it's kind of just like a bunch of different effects. There are more things too. There's like an Acid Vial. There are some of the more unique bombs, like the Rune Powder Bombs, which are very, very strong, which you can get at certain points of the game. So And obviously anything you can make with Alchemy, but these are kind of going to kind of be your main things. Uh, there's also something called a flash bringer as well which kind of meant to work against steel watchers so you can make some of those as well those kind of like blind enemies which is quite fun so feel free to kind of experiment with the different types of bombs but as i was saying before that is the build and like i say maneuverability high damage thanks to sharpshooter various different damage types and ways to control the battlefield with the various different types of grenades the ability to output a lot of damage per turn between attack extra attack bonus action throwing action surge uh, sneak attacks when they become relevant you have a lot of different options here uh, i feel like this build turned out quite nicely and it was a concept i wanted to explore for a while and i'm glad i finally got around to it but this is definitely the build that has the most variance in how you can build it ditch the fighter levels if you don't think the fighting style is worth it put those levels into barbarian get an extra feat grab those wizard levels if you want to be able to use transmutation wizard to make more grenades per materials that could be useful hell grab ranger levels if you feel like you want to grab maybe something like um colossus slayer for extra range damage maybe dread ambusher for that uh, first kind of attack bonus Bonus. Uh, you can build this character pretty much whatever you like, however you like. This is just kind of like an example of a way to build this character. And I quite like it overall. I think the overall vibe of the build is quite nice. Again, mixed with the equipment, you kind of do just get that kind of like on the boots kind of soldier infantry field feel, while also kind of getting that like kind of high maneuverability and like ex high explosive action that something like the Doom series would give you. I think I will do a more dedicated Doom build in the future if people want that, but you know that's because it was just kind of like off the cusp for this build. And the reason for that is because it is very late at night right now. I spent forever deliberating what build I wanted to do today. I had a build that I thought I wanted to do, um, but then I just kind of realized that it's basically a very slight variation on the builds I've done before that were quite popular, and I didn't really just want to rehash the same thing. Uh, it was a glowing rogue, which was basically the idea of it was that it was a rogue that used the radiating orb gear to kind of be like, well, you can't see me if you're blinded by light. So it was kind of like the opposite of like a shadowy stealthy rogue. It was just like a huzzah! Flashbang, and then that was kind of the deal. So because radiating orb gives you a reduction to your hit rolls, if you want to see that, uh, let me know. But I was like, you know, I kind of want to do something different. I was deliberating back and forth. I was looking at Warlock. I was looking at Druid. And then I was just like, I was scrolling through my old build requests, build concepts, like I kind of have in my old notepad file. And then I saw the Grenada, which I already had half built. I just had to figure out some of the equipment. And I was like, you know what? Yes. Let's do this today. So I really, really hope you guys enjoy it. I feel like it was quite a fun concept to build around. Like I said, I kind of scrambled uh, to build this and record this video tonight because I was so indecisive. But there's going to be some more solid build concepts coming in the future. Uh, Friday will be a deity build, probably Corellian because we kind of had a bit more of an idea of how that one was going to go. Then Ogma after that. Next week, I want to kind of do another Dark Urge build if I can, but I'm going to need to uh, do some prep work for that it kind of occurred to me that I don't have a complete Dark Urge save file like I do with this one, so I actually have to make a new playthrough, go through the game with Dark Urge, picking up some certain things along the way that I will need, uh, that you can only get from story events. For those of you who have played the game as a Dark Urge probably already know what I'm talking about. So, look forward to, I guess that will either be on Monday or Wednesday, depending. Uh, still working on that big, big kind of video that I've been talking about. If you've uh, been on my streams, or like in the Discord, I've kind of hinted at what it's going to be um and it's nearly finished i don't have that much longer left to do i just have some a couple of heavily edited sequences and then just some fine tuning on some other sections and then it will be out i'm not going to say it's going to be this weekend but it's a possibility i would say probably next weekend is more likely so look forward to that 
And yeah, uh, I think that is going to do it for me. Again, po apologies that this video was so haphazard. I'm just running a bit behind on things. Uh, next video will definitely be a bit more uh, substantial, let's say. I've, I've got a really fun idea for a Fiend Warlock build that I don't think people will see coming. So I'm really, because I haven't worked with Fiend Warlock in a long time, and I've really, really wanted to make something kind of fi fire themed again. And I think it's going to be really, really cool. So, but yeah. That is the build, that is the video, I will see you all next time, and thank you so much for watching.